Released over eight years ago, the i7-5960X was the first mainstream DDR4 8-core 16 thread released on the X99 architecture from Intel. It came in with a whopping price point of around $1,000 and today can be had on the used market for close to $50. Though in 2023, how does it perform against the last DDR4 dedicated 8-core CPU 16 thread from AMD? This is the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. And today we're going to be testing these CPUs in a variety of gaming benchmarks at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. So let's get into those benchmarks right after today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. So the first benchmark we'll start off here is the most dramatic at 1080p low settings. And here's where in Hogwarts Legacy, the Ryzen 7 5800X3D scores nearly double the FPS of the i7-5960X. And moving on to 1440p high settings, here's where the difference does reduce a little bit, but it's still substantial. And then moving on to 4K Ultra, the difference is still yet again quite substantial. Now you may have noticed in those benchmarks, we've got a clock speed of 4.2 gigahertz on the 5960X. That's because this CPU came in with a lot of headroom on the table. I mean, it came in with a base clock of three gigahertz and you could easily tune this for much higher speeds. This was back in the day when CPU manufacturers didn't push all their products to the brink and required a water cooler at the settings out of the box. And here's where in today's benchmarks, we're using a budget air cooler on the i7-5960X. For memory speeds, we're using 3600 megahertz dual channel 32 gigabytes on the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. And on the Intel, we're using 2666 megahertz. And this is due to the fact that the memory controller being the first DDR4 memory controller introduced to mainstream desktops on the i7 wasn't that strong. Fast forward all those years, the Ryzen memory controller is a lot stronger being able to accept higher memory speeds. Then moving on to Far Cry 6, 1080p low settings. The difference is just like Hogwarts Legacy, quite substantial, not just at 1080p, but moving on to 1440p high, as well as 4K Ultra, there is still quite a significant difference there too. Moving over to Cyberpunk 2077, we're seeing these differences yet again play out, especially at 1080p. The one to 1440p, the differences are greatly mitigated. And then surprisingly at 4K, the average FPS is actually the same. The back to a latest release title in 2023, The Last of Us sees at 1080p that Ryzen 7 scoring a sizable victory, then on to 1440p high settings, similar story, and then also at 4K Ultra, there still is a significant difference. Moving on to the final title here, Returnal, 1080p low settings scored a massive difference over 200 FPS on the Ryzen 7 versus 120 FPS on the i7, stepping up to 1440p high sees over a 50% gap, and then onto 4K Ultra, surprisingly, sees very similar results, not just in the average FPS, but also the 0.1% lows. So those gaming numbers show that the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is not only the best DDR4 CPU to get, but it still is an extremely relevant CPU for high-end gaming in 2023, even versus the DDR5 counterparts, where the 5800X 3D is still a great favorite among people, not just looking for the highest FPS, but also decent value. Coming in below its MSRP of $449, now just a shade over $300, coupled in with inexpensive AM4 platforms and cheap DDR4 memory does make for a good option for gamers, especially coupled in with one of my favorite parts of this CPU is it does all these gaming numbers at really good power consumption numbers. Here's where from the wall, we saw 331 watts in Cyberpunk 2077 versus 382 watts on the Intel i7. However, the worst thing here was the FPS in this benchmark was significantly lower on the i7, meaning that the Ryzen 7 was stressing the GPU more, making this benchmark more in favor of the i7, although the Ryzen 7 scored a substantial victory here with the direct numbers being 70 watts versus an astounding 177 watts. So for me personally, the i7-5960X is not that good of a CPU, unlike the 5820K, which we just took a look at in the previous video. I'll put the link to that up here. That CPU actually was really good, scoring in some titles really good FPS, and it had lower power consumption, as well as being able to clock 200 megahertz higher 
on the same voltage settings and the same air cooler. And with this first release 8 core, basically packing more cores and threads onto a CPU meant that the power consumption and heat got out of control really quick. All in all, summing up X99, it simply was a fantastic architecture, not just when it was first released, but even to this date. My favorite CPU on that architecture being the 5820K, which I personally bought. And the ironic thing there is, it's still going to give out great gaming FPS to this date, especially coupled in with a mid-range GPU, where in today's testing, we wanted to extract the maximum difference, hence why we use the RTX 4090. Though if you're a competitive gamer looking for the max FPS, especially at 1080p low or medium or even ultra settings, here's where I tested a game that I played personally on a full multiplayer benchmark, Dota 2. And here's where the X3D scores a really big victory here too, coming over 230 average FPS with great 0.1% lows versus the i7, which got just over 150 average FPS. So there is a big difference here in competitive multiplayer titles, but for eight years in the making, is it really that big? I'll let you guys be the judge of that in the comment section below, but if you ever come up across a used bargain on an X99 kit, then it's certainly worth a look. Where in today's video, the kit that I picked up here with an X99 workstation motherboard, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and an i7-5960X sent me back under 150 US dollars for the whole total kit, which is under half the price of the Ryzen 7 5800X3D alone. Anyhow guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. We're actually going to be in Taiwan by the time you see this video. So do stay subbed if you want to see the content as soon as it drops here at Tech Air City. Ring that bell as well, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this look at X99. We'll also have, of course, some X99 Xeon coverage coming very soon. So stay tuned for that as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out for now. Bye.